Now, South Africa and Nigeria have signed trade, uh, 30 trade and cooperation agreements on Thursday, weeks after a wave of violence against Nigerian nationals in Johannesburg and Pretoria had strained relations between Africa's top two economies. In September, mobs armed with makeshift weapons attacked businesses and homes owned by foreigners, leading to at least uh, 10 deaths, dozens of injuries, and up to 400 arrests. In response, Nigeria repatriated around 600 of its citizens living in South Africa. President Cyril Ramaphosa and President Muhammadu Buhari, at the end of the two-day visit, said they regretted the violence and subsequent retaliation in Nigeria against South African businesses, pledging instead to deepen trade ties. Plus TV Africa's Irene Ubani gives us an update. At the just concluded Nigeria South Africa Business Forum, hosted in South Africa, which played host to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamedou Buhari. President of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, emphasized on the need for a more expansive trade and industrialization amongst the African continent. But we must also trade more, invest more, and work together more. That is what I hope South Africa and Nigeria will be able to achieve more and more. To achieve this, obviously our continent must overcome old patterns of unbalanced and unequal growth and embrace a model of inclusive and sustainable growth Africa is emerging as the next growth market in the world. To realize the opportunity of our demographic dividend, we will need to rapidly expand and diversify our industrial capacity. And in many ways go beyond just talking about the dream of industrialization and begin to do it in real effect. We must become leading producers in the types of consumer products a growing middle class demands and in the complex industrial products that are needed for core industries like mining, construction, agriculture, and infrastructure. He also spoke on the financial cost of developing Africa's infrastructural deficit. The African Development Bank estimates that Africa needs to spend between $130 billion and $170 billion a year to meet our infrastructure needs. That spending will connect the continent through new roads, rail, port infrastructure, and crucially, through broadband. This infrastructure development will strengthen the business environment but will itself unlock a number of growth opportunities for African manufacturers, construction companies, and services firms. Also of necessity is the need for an inclusive growth for all nations. Recent history tells us that if only a few large countries benefit from integration, the long-term prospects for sustainable integration are truly dim. We must ensure that all African states on our continent, big and small, do indeed benefit from this great promise that this Africa Free Trade Area Agreement holds out. This will be achieved by allowing flexibility in the implementation of the agreement by smaller countries and by developing a regional industrial vision that recognizes each country's unique capabilities and fairly shares production.